Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Bert the Stormtrooper and this is the home of That's Just Prime, the comprehensive Optimus Prime review series. I also review other Transformers, lots of G1 stuff, as well as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, GoBots, and pretty much any other toy that may jump out at me. I also do the occasional arcade and pinball machine videos, unboxings, blogs, challenges, and miscellaneous videos where my daughter usually makes fun of me. Those are a lot of fun. If you're new to the channel, thanks for checking me out. Please be sure to click that subscribe button and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share if you like what you see. Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper and today we're gonna be taking a look at the Transformers War for Cybertron Siege Leader Class Shockwave. Released in December of 2018, as of the time of this recording, it has been two years since this figure came out and I actually can't believe it's already been two years since Siege came out. Like I said, he was a leader class figure and originally retailed for approximately $50. However, I found this one today. I was out of town, out of my area. I went to a Target and I found him at clearance at Target for 25 bucks, so I had to pick him up. We can see Shockwave here looking very G1-ish with some added armament. He's packed in his robot mode already, so we, we're, we've got the window box here and we can already see the figure right there, figure with all of his extra armament, accoutrement, whatever it is. I am actually unfamiliar with this figure, so uh, I'm excited to uh, be checking this one out. So over here on the side, we've got some really cool artwork of Shockwave. On this side over here, we've got that really cool artwork that we got for the Siege line. And then on the back, we've got some product shots of Shockwave, both in his robot mode, his vehicle mode, and his armored up mode, I guess is that, that's what we're gonna call him. So that is it for the packaging. Let's get them opened up and check it out. And here is War for Cybertron Siege Shockwave out of the package. I love this toy. Included with the package is the figure itself, which I've already transformed in ship mode. All of his armor pieces, which are also already attached and his instructions uh, poster. I'm gonna call this a poster. This thing is absolutely, enormous and printed on both sides uh which is funny enough that there is something that we saw in the box that we didn't get in the instructions and you kind of have to guess at it yourself it's not too complicated but still i mean we got that big of an instruction sheet and it's still missing something and here is shockwave in his ship mode and i have to say i absolutely love this i was on the fence on this figure i didn't care for shockwave turning into a ship instead of turning into his gun uh, but then when I got him in hand and I put this together and I had this in front of me, I absolutely fell in love with it. This screams Robotech to me in all the best ways. I think this thing looks amazing. I've seen a couple of people that have done the fan mode transformations. There's a couple of different ones to turn this guy into a gun. And you can kind of flip it over and you can kind of see the gun itself. It's there if you really want to see it. And again, there's a couple of fan transformations that people have done that you can get a gun out of. I've tried them myself and, you know, honestly, uh, I've turned my tune completely around on them. Once I had it in hand, didn't really care for the gun mode. I uh, really, really loved the ship itself. Um, so, yeah, this thing is absolutely enormous. It's approximately 10 inches long with a wingspan of about 8 inches. So a really good size. And here for comparison is Starscream, Siege Starscream, so you can see the size difference. And, you know, Shockwave is a figure that got some criticism because it did sell at a leader price point, but the robot itself is a Voyager at best, a small Voyager at best, but the price point came out of all the added parts. But here in the ship mode, you can see this thing is just absolutely enormous and beautiful. Again, this just reminds me out of, uh, of something out of, uh, out of Robotech, which I absolutely love. A lot of purple and gray details, a little bit of lavender here and there. You got the silver wings up here uh, on, the, on the cockpit or on the bridge itself. I love that bridge and the way it resembles Shockwave's head and it's even light pipe. Check this out right there. That is so, so cool. That is such a cool little detail. And the way that this transforms and this goes away, like when I saw pictures of it, I thought this was actually the head. It's not, this goes in a completely unexpected space for me, which is really, really cool. And just kind of going all the way around and these are all armor pieces, so you can reconfigure it a, a, a bit. You know, you can change these up if you want, if you don't like it here. I like it there because of the wings, but you could put them down here if you wanted to, or you can maybe attach them to the side. I, I don't know if you find a port for it, you can attach it somewhere else. You can kind of move these around, but uh, I really like the way that that looks 
right there. I think that is just so, so cool. Now, uh, this being Siege Shockwave, it would be cool if this figure got the uh, Soundwave treatment where they kind of retool it just enough to give them the gun mode and just kind of make either an Earthrise or a Kingdom. I don't think they have it planned, but it would be cool if, if f further down the line we got a retooling of this figure with the Soundwave treatment where we can turn him into the gun. That would be really, really cool. Getting in the transformation, we're going to start by removing all of his armor pieces. So we'll go ahead and remove that. And then we'll remove this piece here. And we'll just start setting these off to the side. Remove that. Remove that one. Wow, that is really on there. Okay. We'll set those off to the side. And then right up here in the front, we're going to untap these here and here. They also untap there and there. This whole thing is going to open up. And this whole thing is going to come out. We're going to set all of that off to the side and here is what's left of shockwave spaceship which again this still works as a ship or you can turn around and also work it as a gun completely up to you very very cool stuff so getting in the transformation we're going to start up here at the cockpit or the bridge rather and just close those up take the hose and separate it right there let's uh go back here to the, again to the bridge we're gonna just lean this back completely. This was tabbed in right there, right under what's going to be his chest or in his abs right there. So pull that out. And then we're going to separate the back of the ship, which is going to be the legs. And also the bridge itself. We're going to separate this in half just like that. This is going to allow us to use this double hinge and bring this leg out, down and over. And then it's going to tab in. This piece is going to flip in and tab in there and there. Go ahead and do that and repeat on the other side. Very, very simple transformation, very intuitive, uh, but it accomplishes so much. Very, very cool figure. I am very impressed with this figure. All right, we're going to go up here to the, um, I don't know, the front of the ship or the cannon if you're using it as a, as a space gun. <laughs> we're going to open this up. This is going to hinge here and here, so it's just going to hinge all the way out like so. Take the arms and split them, separate them, bring them down to the side. And then you can take the hose and plug it into the bottom of his forearm right there. Go ahead and close this up. That's going to tab into itself. And then it's going to come down and it's going to tab in these two tabs into these two slots right here. Just like that. Finally, we are going to open up the chest. Bring out the head. And then there's two tabs on the back of the neck that are going to go into the back of his uh, body there. And there is Shockwave in robot mode. Here in robot mode, Shockwave is approximately six and a half inches tall. So again, Voyager size, but also on the small size for a Voyager size. Here he is next to Netflix uh, Siege. Yes, yeah, Siege or Earthrise. I don't remember. It's the Netflix Megatron. There you go. So you can see, again, quite a bit of difference. And you expect Shockwave to be a little bit shorter than Megatron, but uh, he's also quite lanky. I mean, it's a fantastic, beautiful looking figure, but it is quite... Uh, small for a even for a Voyager, he's on the small side. Take Megatron off to the side, and here he is next to Soundwave. And again, you can see he's just a little smaller than Shock than Soundwave. Uh, he missed it by that much in the height department, and again, again he's kind of lengthy, lanky, and uh, not as bulky as some of the other Voyager figures. But he still looks amazing standing side by side. To these other guys and we'll bring him in close so you can see i mean when it comes to shockwave there's really not a whole lot of detail is there you got the face there which is just that dark hidden face with the one eye again really really nice light pipe and check that out that is just so cool the way that just lights up you got the purple head the black face if you want to call it a face and the silver ear pieces there and just kind of going all the way up and down this figure so you can check it out the detail the level of detail on this figure is absolutely amazing going all the way around not any real kibble to speak of uh the backpack is expected is very it's i i love the integration of the cannon itself or you know what would be the barrel of the cannon or the front of the ship or whatever you want to call this i love the integration of that into his backpack the g1 figure had a backpack it was actually the battery pack uh that went into his back but then the actual cannon itself or the barrel of the cannon you had to uh, set it off to the side, a parts former. I love the integration of this, and this really makes me believe that this can work as a retool into a laser gun. Going all the way around, very clean figure. Very, very nice looking. A lot of detail on this. I love it a lot. 
articulation wise you got the head it can go up and down and side to side and tilt side to side shoulders can go up and down all the way around of course these this one arm is going to be limited by the uh, hose itself they can also go in and out at this joint here and also at that joint that's the transformation joint there you got a rotation at the bicep and a bend at the elbow not of you know uh, for what it's worth this will actually spin as if it was a wrist rotation which he also does have on this arm this will also spin but there's you know what's the point of spinning that right you got a waist rotation legs can go forward on the racket back in and out rotation at the thigh bend at the knee they can only bend about that much because oh i have the legs backwards <laughs> oh my god um i can hear everybody screaming <laughs> the transformation is wrong okay knee, knees can bend that much oh my and then the uh the feet have an ankle tilt of about that much so there you go very very cool now let's talk about his armor we'll set shockwave back in look at that he just looks so good absolutely love the way that looks all right, let's talk about all of this armor pieces here. All right, so obviously we're going to mount all of this on him. But before we do that, you saw on the back of the pic of the box, you saw the picture of Shockwave uh, in this form, riding what appeared to be some sort of a chariot or an armored chariot of some sort, right? The instructions don't tell you how to put it together. So you kind of have to guess at it. So, uh, and I'm fairly certain that this is actually the way to do it. Uh, but again, I did guess at it. Uh, just based on the pictures that I saw. Uh, so we're going to put this together. I'm going to clip this on here. And I just started putting things together until I made a fair approximation of what I saw in, on the picture itself. Actually, these two will tab in together. We've got a little tab right there on the back, so you can actually tab these together. And then we'll go ahead and peg these to this piece here. There and there. And then you can take these and just kind of peg them on the side right here. Just like that. And that's about the closest approximation. That I mean, that looks exactly like what you saw on the back of the box. At least to me. That's that's what that looked like. So, again, there's no... The instructions didn't tell you, but there you go. And, of course, you got the two pegs up here, so you can take Shockwave and just plug them in there if you'd like. Or you can just get them standing there. Or, you know, do whatever you'd like with them. So, there you go. So, that is how, at least for me, that's how I made that work. Now, let's do the armament itself. So, we'll go ahead and take all of this apart again. And we'll separate all of this again. And personally, I don't care for the look of what we're about to do. So we're going to take this piece here, and this is going to just we're going to we're going to put the fins in facing towards his back because of this notch here. I think that's the way that works. It could be this way. I don't actually. I don't really think it matters as far as that goes in. As long as that goes in there, and then you can take this and. These are going to tab in. Let me see if I can show you better. There's a peg hole and a peg right there. So you just peg that in place there and there. And then you can bring these together or you can fold them up or you can do whatever you want. You can kind of make a little bit, bit tails there kind of a thing. So, so there's the backpack itself. These are going to be leg pieces. So just bring the little wing pieces out and then just tab that into the feet themselves. Just like that. And then finally, we're going to give him his shoulder pieces, which have this kind of weird, cool uh, spider uh, motif thing going on because it gives them extra arms. So you're going to bring these this way. So they're facing in like this, okay, with the little wing pieces facing towards the front. And these are tabbed in. These look, these are like almost identical to his arms right there. And there's a little bitty tab right there that slotted into there. So you take that to bring it down, and it is articulated just like an arm would be. There's a peg there that's going to go into this peg hole on the side of his shoulder right there. Once you get it lined up. Like that. And like that. There you go. And there is Shockwave in his, I don't know what you call this, his armored mode, his leader mode, or whatever you want to call this mode. The which is approximately seven inches tall at the top of the head, seven and a half if you want to go up here. So he did grow some, uh, bringing in Megatron one more time. You can see he actually did grow quite a bit. He's actually at least had 
level with him. And then we'll bring in shot or not shockwave. We'll bring in sound wave one more time so you can see that. So he's actually quite larger than sound wave now. So, you know, that's that's kind of how they're doing the whole leader thing, I suppose, for this guy. Um, I mean, it, it's a cool mode, but this this doesn't. I don't care for this. I don't like the look of this. I would just as soon put the parts into that chariot mode and set it off to the side because I just absolutely love the way that this guy looks in his regular mode. And here we have one last look at Shockwave, again, back in his normal robot mode, just because that's uh, the way I like seeing him. Uh, this is just what looks best to me, along with his little chariot thing, which I find quite cool on its own. So one more thing to show off is the fact that his gun is compatible with the blast effect, so you can, you know, have him shooting, or these, these are just the same, so you can actually have this thing shooting also if you'd like. You can have that thing going off, and then, I don't know, let's give him some big ridiculous blast on this one. How about that <laughs> so that's a thing that you can do which is really really cool um yeah again i originally i was on the fence with this figure i passed on it i'm really happy that i found it on clearance and picked it up uh because i am very very happy with this figure this, if, if, if you can still find this out in the wild if you passed on it it is absolutely worth checking out and i think that about covers the transformers war for cybertron siege shockwave what did you think of this figure? Let me know down in the comments. Give me some thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're notified when I upload a new video. I've got a donate button up there. If you want to hit on that, I certainly would appreciate it. Please share it with your friends if you like what you see, and I'll talk to you next time.